sure which direction to go in. Well, that way. Oh. It looks flooded to me. There's a sign there that says Spurn Footpath. And then it shows a footpath filled with water. But there's water there, so I'm presuming this water's come from the water. Okay, I'm on my way. There it is, that's the thing that takes you down the track. Welcome to, this is Spurn Point, which is uh, the very, I guess, the easterly part of the Humber. The Humber Restuary is just there, that's the end of it. And then over there is the North Sea, and beyond the North Sea are all these EU countries that we don't, we don't seem to like, apparently. But this isn't a politics place, this is a happy place. I'm beginning my journey, really. I'm just at the start of the, the Spurn, which is a, a landmass that curls all the way out to a lighthouse, the way over there, uh, and that's the end. And I'm not entirely convinced I can make it because I have a knee injury brought on by extreme obesity. Now, people don't come here to walk their dogs. Oh, no, 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 no. Because you can't walk your dog here because this is a, a nature reserve, uh, meaning that there's lots of rare and beautiful creatures living here and uh, you can come and look at them with your eyes if you want to. Uh, they're over there somewhere apparently. I recommend you bring some binoculars if you want to see the creatures. There are birds, there are butterflies, there are seals. Uh, that's it. It's probably about getting towards three o'clock in the afternoon and of course, because this is December, winter comes, or the, the dark comes quick here. So there's some of the birdies. I can see a curlew. Oh no, it's a grey plover. See all those birds there, I would have said curlew. But the reality is, none of them are curlews. Especially not that red shank. Should we go down to the beach? Let's go down to the beach again. Let's, Let's go, go touch, touch the, the waves. waves. Let's, Let's go, go down, down to the beach, beach again. again. See, See who misbehaves. Wash, Wash the white from the window. Tan of A plus B. Let's go down, down to the sea again. again. Let's, Let's go, go touch, touch the, the sea. sea. I'm going to walk along this edge here to see if there's any glass on the beach, which from which I can make some sort of jewelry. I know it's a bit effeminate of me, but it's fun. And you can sell it to people. What I should probably do is do a little bit of research into exactly what Spurn Point is all about, which I'm happy to do. If you'll just hold on a minute. Go look at the sea while I look this up. Spurn is, is technically an island because of this stretch of beach I'm on now, which as I say, the body of water over there and the body water of over there, that's the North Sea, that's the Humber, they join, leaving a, a, a bit of land, so just an island, I think is what they call them. Um, it says here on the internet that uh, the Spurn head covers 280 acres, if that means anything to you, uh, above high water. It's, not, it's pretty much sea level, I would say. It's only, it's only like, a few, like a couple of metres above sea level. Uh, it's three miles uh, long, five kilometres in Old Speak. And the its thinnest point is about 50 yards. 50 yards there, folks. So I hope you know your metres and your kilometres and your yards and your miles. At the very end, there's a RNLI uh, lifeboat station and, and they do uh, an amazing job. I don't know if any of you have ever been on a lifeboat. I filmed on lifeboats and lordy, it's a difficult task to to be out at sea, not knowing what you're going to find, trying to save people's lives 
while also battling that over there, the sea, which is not your friend. The sea wants to do everything apart from let you float on top of it. It wants to pull you under, don't ya? Don't ya? Now, since 1960, this uh, body of land was owned by the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust and it's designated a National Nature Reserve Heritage Coast. And it's part of the Humber Flats, whatever they are. And there's marshes over there, apparently, hence the curlews, which aren't curlews. But there's a lighthouse at the end, uh, which was put there in 1895. That's five years before Oscar Wilde died. Uh, he was just going into jail about then, I believe. I think that's right. You can pick me up on that if you want. Now, it was, it, but it was deactivated in 1985, which makes me think there must be a new lighthouse there because you can't not have a lighthouse at the end of Spurn Point. I, I wouldn't have thought. There's only, the only one thing left to do here, and that's press on and see how far I can go. But I, I'm more worried about losing light than anything because it is getting very, very dark. Very dark. The bad news is, and I, I think this possibly is bad news, it looks like rain over there. Uh, I'm not really dressed for rain, so let's hope it's not rain. But the, the, the sun is coming through the clouds and the clouds are nearly touching the end of the spurn. So, uh, sadly, I don't think I'm going to be able to go to the very end. In fact, I'm thinking I'm going to turn around here because this is something that needs to be done early in the morning, I think, when there's light. I don't have enough light to get all the way there and back, and I, I don't think I'm actually going to make it, which is pathetic, really, because it's probably only a mile. But I'm going to head back, because it's quite far, you know. It's quite far. But I'll tell you what, it's a nice place to come here. Because of all the rules, you can't do anything, you can't camp, you can't have a dog, you can't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Because of that, it's actually quite nice because people don't want to come. And if going places where people are not at is your thing, then Spurned Point on the estuary, the mouth of the Humber, is for you. Forget Disneyland. Um, and you probably can't. You probably can't see. But over there, there's just like a an array of wind turbines. I think that's quite spooky, they just sit out there in the water. Because they have personality, but they're all kind of not able to be close to each other. Am I, am I making sense? I like wind turbines. These are, and I think there's some sort of sea defences left over from the war. Now, I could be just romanticising things. Not that there's anything romantic about the war, but you know what I mean. Uh, they look like that to me, but they could be modern. Who knows? Kind of weird though, they're like uh, little jigsaw pieces. I do know that along, along here, there are definitely uh, sea defences left over from the war. Um, because if you think about it, the whole east coast of Great Britain was uh, vulnerable to those Nazis who might have been coming up, up from the north, northern parts of Europe where they sort of conquered and invaded. Uh, so there was a, a thought that this, this side of the country, the east side of the country was vulnerable. Um, in fact, the whole island was really. And thank God for the radar, early versions of the radar. My granddad used to work in the, on the radars during the war, down on the south coast. And uh, he was like the early warning system. Apparently he missed a couple because he was having a cigarette break. At least that's what he told me. Look at this here. Look at what you ask. It's a piece of wood. I don't know, my mind starts thinking, oh, I'll make a nice bench out of that. I don't need a bench. I honestly, I can't emphasize how nice it is to be somewhere where people aren't. I don't know if I would be able to put up with it for long, but this does feel remote. I know it's not. Is that an oil rig out there?
I don't think that is an oil rig. I think that's a, pl a platform for the operation of that um, wind farm. That's what I suspect that is. I wonder if people actually live out there then. I mean, they need to be looked after, right? Although I did notice one's not spinning, so they're not really, not really on the job, are they? Right then, so there's the beach. And then the beach slowly becomes this, which is a, a sandy road. It feels hard underfoot. And then just beyond, it becomes tarmac. Fascinating stuff. Oh, I'm here all week, folks, here all week. So that's quite interesting. There's a sign here that explains that the washover, um, December 2013, there was a storm surge. The sea rose by two meters and it basically washed, there was a road going all the way over, but it washed the road away. So I reckon that's what those blocks were. That was the old road, maybe. I stand corrected. Those jigsaw-like blocks were actually, actually the base of what was uh, a World War II railway system that went out to the spurn, spurn there, which I must say at this very minute looks quite majestic. Oh, you want to look? Well, thanks for watching. You know what to do. See you next time.